Martin, I came here to your company, it must be over a decade ago, trying to sell you a machine. I wasn't successful, but someone has been here, uh, <laughs> namely Star. Uh, they've yeah. done very well here from you, haven't you? But I'm assuming you've done quite well from them too. Yeah, they know they're very reliable machines and uh, we've got seven of them now. And uh, When did you buy your first one? I think it was 2004. And Davramatic as a company, you are you are solely ter a turn part manufacturer yeah. with a little bit of milling on them. You don't have milling machines in the sense yeah. of vertical machining centres, just purely turning, is it? Purely turning machines, yeah. And why have you always stuck to turning? Is it because that's what you're good at? Well, that's what we're good at, yeah. That's what we know and that's what we're good at. That's what we're known for. So our customer base is... Uh, you know, there's a, a, a turning a quality turning uh, shop. So. And in the history of the company, what sorts of uh, industries and what sorts of parts have you been making and do you make? Well, aerospace, defence, uh, automotive, uh, medical, uh, electrical and uh, sensor technology components as well. I, I noticed from your website your AS9100 accreditation. Does that yeah. come in handy for you? Oh yeah, yeah. It helps us win a lot of the aerospace work and uh, the defence work as well it needs to be to the uh, aerospace standard. And when I first came in here today, I asked you how many parts you uh, you make here. I mean, it looks like there's certainly a lot of swarf. You're making a lot yeah, of parts yeah, in a year. Making a lot of parts, yeah, over a million parts a year, I think. Yeah. Okay, so you went from buying your first machine from Star, uh, your sliding head laid back in 2004, I think you said. Yeah. Uh, now, what we're we, 14 years on, uh, the latest ones come in here, the SR32J2 Type B. Um, What's the reason behind this purchase? This purchase gives us uh, an extra y-axis on a subspindle, so it allows us to machine more complicated components with uh, more difficult uh, features on them. And is that something that you needed for a new application that you'd got, or is it an existing application which you're just trying to reduce the operations and the setups? We need it for a new application of a new component we've, uh, we've made some samples for. Uh, but it was also a feature that we needed uh, going forward, I think, on some of the other work that we've done. Cycle times would have been reduced if we had the capability of a Y-axis on the subspindle. And what, what differences do you see, uh, I mean, through this sort of uh, period that you started investing with Star till now, how much difference do you see in the technology they're offering these days in what the machines can produce? Are they advancing quite quickly, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, they're coming along quite quickly we've got this new uh, high frequency turning system and uh, yeah they're doing lots of innovations to the machine and, and is this your first it's a good point now the high frequency turn is this your first machine that's got that this is our first machine with it yeah now when I walked in I saw the swarf bin out the front uh, you look like you've got loads of stringy swarf yeah, in there yeah, and I was thinking to myself you, you would be a perfect candidate for HFT <laughs> have you got to grips with it yet we're still, the machine is still quite new and we haven't really got to grips with it yet. Uh, Star should be in the next week or so to give us some training on it. And but I can imagine from looking at what I, at what I did see, this, this could really change things for you. Do you have to have a lot of operator intervention to make sure, you know, to stop the machine to clear swarf and stuff as yeah. it as it's currently stands? Yeah, we put a lot of optional stops into the more complicated components so that we have to uh, stop the machine, clear the swarf and then carry on. So uh, this HFT should eliminate that, so we can uh, just con continually run. Now, what, what about the um, the 32J2 Type B machine? A lot heavier than the, the previous uh, model. Uh, there's more tools here, more power. Um, yeah. Were those some of the things that you you liked about this particular model? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've uh, just uh, done a 316 stainless component, and we tapped M12 in the subspindle, and uh, the power on the subspindle is is way higher more than the previous SR32. I've got to ask you this question as well, because you're stuck with Star all along. Have you, um, have you ever considered going away from him? Have you ever looked at other, other, other options open to you? And if so, what, what, what sort of kept you coming back this way? We did have uh, another manufacturer's machines uh, a few years ago, and we did have some mechanical issues with them, uh, the reliability. So we, uh, we've actually sold all them off now and uh, gone well, totally on star. Okay, tell us about this part here. Uh, I'd like you just to walk us through, because this is one of the applications, a new job you've got, which warranted the purchase here. And this gives us an example of you utilizing the Y-axis on the subspindle as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this component here, we had to mill a flat and a radius onto the flat. And uh, the Y-axis and the subspindle came in very handy 
to be able to produce that uh, radius onto the flat. And um, So the, the front end of the part you were using the y-axis to do the flats on the front end of the component yeah. and then you were using the y-axis on the subspit when you had it in the subspin. So you've got y-axis use on both sides. That's right, yeah. Now how would you have gone about doing this if you hadn't bought this machine? We were going to have to do the front and back all on the front. So it, the cycle time would have been a much, much longer. Uh, and yeah. you, you talk about the machine in stainless and, and also what this is a titanium material, this isn't it? Is titanium, yeah, great part. How's that cutting? Oh, it cuts lovely, yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. We have issues with the floor and that's why we bought the, uh, the HFT. What, what about the lubrications that you use in all of your machines here? You, neat cutting oil, isn't it? Why is that your preference? Well, the staff recommend the neat cutting oil. But this particular grade that we use is uh, recommended by Star, and uh, we have no problem with it. Uh, what I also liked about today, we came in here, uh, you were after a bit of support from Star because there's an application that you're looking at doing. Uh, you were on the, on the phone backwards and forwards to them. Um, it's fair to say that everyone, even, in, even with your experience here, does need uh, training and, and, and they're handheld, yeah. handheld, don't they, even with a new machine. Uh, has that been forthcoming? Yes, yeah, staff service is very good. They uh, normally, when we phone up, they're right there. And uh, if we need a service guy to come out, they, they're, they're here very short, you know, within a day or so. So it is also, to conclude really, probably fair to say, even if I came in here and again tried to sell you another machine, <laughs> I probably wouldn't win the order, would I? You wouldn't, no. Not less it was a staff. <laughs>